Welcome back to another exciting Swords and Magic and Stuff devlog. We've got some amazing updates to share with you today, so buckle up and join us on this thrilling journey. Unsurprisingly, we've been crazy busy since the last devlog. Just a couple days after it launched, our son was born, which basically put me out of commission for a month, and even now I'm struggling to find the same amount of uninterrupted dev time that I'm used to. Who'd have thought that having a baby would be such a time sink? But after my brief baby hiatus, I found myself getting pretty antsy after sitting for even a few hours at a time, especially since the new baby does not like to be put down, leaving me aimlessly pacing around our house for hours at a time. Because of this, I decided that maybe it was time to actually upgrade my workstation a bit. i had been looking into standing desks for a long time, but just never really pulled the trigger on one. Luckily, an awesome opportunity just happened to fall into my lap. I want to thank FlexiSpot for reaching out and sending me a top-of-the-line standing desk to try out for this video. And don't worry, we'll get right back to the devlog in just a minute. But first, can I just talk about how much I've been missing out by not getting a standing desk sooner? If you're a developer or gamer who spends long hours sitting at your desk like I do, then do yourself a favor and look into a standing desk. The desk sent by FlexiSpot is massive, coming in at 78 inches wide and 30 inches deep. Plenty of space for my huge triple monitor setup but they've got plenty of other sizes to fit anything you need. I was really surprised at just how sturdy this desk is, even when fully raised. The motors have no problem lifting up to 240 pounds, which almost seems like overkill for most setups. My favorite feature is definitely the programmable memory settings though. You can store up to three different heights and then with the click of a button, it just automatically moves back to that height for you. It also has a bump sensor, so you can rest easy knowing that even a trespassing Corgi is safe while lowering the desk back to a seated position. The desk was pretty easy to assemble. I'll warn you that the larger desks have a few missing holes that they recommend you drilling before putting the screws in. Luckily, I'm super handy and very coordinated and had no problem with this at all. Overall, the process was actually pretty quick and painless, even for me. This model doesn't include them, but some of the FlexiSpot desks even include a storage drawer and USB charging outlets. If you wanna check out their desks or need to grab one to overhaul your workstation, you can find a link in the description below. You won't regret it. I don't think I can go back to a non-standing desk after this amount of freedom. Thanks again, FlexiSpot. I appreciate it. All right, now let's jump back into the devlog and catch up on what's been happening in the world of Swords and Magic and stuff. After a little baby vacation and Jan and I were finally able to get back to work, I wanted to better familiarize myself with all the code in the project. In case you forgot or you missed the last devlog, Kindred Games is now back down to a small two-person dev team consisting of just Jana and I. So I started digging through everything the previous programmers had done, trying to better understand every nook and cranny of the project. I started realizing just how many very basic RPG features were we were missing and desperately needed, like status icons to show when you're on fire or slowed or poisoned, or even just wet after taking a little swim. We were also missing a way to actually view your character's stats, so you know exactly how much vitality or focus you even have. After really dialing in on the features that we were lacking, we also started putting together a list of all the priority bugs and features that really needed improving. These features in question were the loot system primarily, as well as the weapon skills. I know I've mentioned both of these a dozen times at least, so I'll try to keep it brief for once. Our loot system was kind of strange. It took all the possible drops from an enemy or chest, etc., shuffled them, and then began checking one at a time against a luck roll. If the roll beat the drop rate, it would drop that item, then move to the next item and continue that until it dropped the max amount of items that that table could drop. On the surface, this sounds perfectly fine, but once you dig into the numbers, this poses a pretty big problem. For example, if you have a diamond with 1% drop rate in a loot table with 19 other items, your chances of finding that diamond are far less than 1% suddenly. First, you have a 5% chance of even checking if you can drop that diamond, and then your roll has to beat a 1% drop rate. I'm not a mathematician by any means, so I won't pretend to know what that drop rate actually is, but it made some of our loot way more rare than we really wanted it to be, and planning around that was really difficult when some chests had 40 different items and others had 4. We also had a luck system that granted bonuses that loot roll. This was pretty problematic as well, because if an item had, for example, 0.0001% chance to drop, and don't worry we don't have anything close to that rare in our little casual RPG and you have plus four luck, that would give you somewhere around a plus two to your loot roll when checking against an item's rarity. So that means that no matter how rare we try to make that item, you now get a 2.0001% chance. 
As for the skill system, before the update, you had somewhere around 15 different skills you could level up, not to mention crafting skills. So let's say you're level 25 in swords, and a cool new mace drops. You have to go all the way back to the beginning of the game to defeat a bunch of low-level creatures with that mace to level it up. This felt really restricting, and it took players forever to level each skill. This was basically the only progression the game had as well. We've been talking a lot about adding a passive skill tree for a long time, which would have been a daunting task to build passives for every single type of weapon in the game. So how did we fix these issues? So for the loot system, I built a very visual editor tool that lets me and Janna quickly and easily build loot tables for anything we need. I'm calling it the Loot Builder Pro, regardless of the fact that there's no basic or light version. Now when a loot container is opened, it runs through the loot in the containers table, rarest to most common. Each item has its rarity checked against a random roll to see if that item can drop. It does this until it's reached its max loot or runs out of loot to check. This ensures that you will always have a chance to drop the rarest items in the table first, instead of just shuffling them and crossing your fingers. As for our new luck system, now instead of having a luck stat, I added a lucky buff, which you can get from a variety of sources, which will just add a second roll whenever you roll for loot. And it takes the better roll of the two, meaning you basically have two chances to drop the item you want. This way, the rarest items in the game can stay rare, but you've simply doubled your chance of dropping it which is a pretty powerful buff, but it's not exactly easy to get. Our Discord is already up in arms over the fact that one of the few foods that grant Lucky is a Halloween-specific food. So weapon skills. To fix this, we decided to implement an entire class system. And while this sounds like a drastic change, it's surprisingly not much different. Now, instead of leveling up your sword, whenever you gain experience while using a sword, mace, or shield, you actually gain experience for the warrior class. When using a dagger, slingshot, or gauntlet, you gain experience for the rogue class, and bow, spear, and axe are ranger. Our martial combat classes are pretty classic, so I don't think I need to explain what they are or how they work. But our magic classes are just a bit more unique. Magic takes a bit of a different turn here though. Instead of individual weapons, each class has its own magic domain which determines which class you get experience for. Our caster classes are mage, mystic, and druid. A mage harnesses the arcane arts, manipulating fire and ice to do damage. The mages are also expert conjurers, which is the third domain they control. Conjuration spells can summon items like food currently, but eventually I like spells that can conjure magic turrets, healing fountains, mailboxes, bank vaults, and just pretty much anything the players would want access to while adventuring that they normally would have to go home for. Mystics are masters of life and death. They control the domains of order and chaos. They don't have a third domain, but they do have the unique ability to use scythes as one of their weapons, meaning that they can technically be a melee mage without multi-classing. Unfortunately right now scythes can't cast spells, so they're pretty limited, but I'd definitely like to get that working in the future. While mystics do make the best healers, they can also dabble in chaos magic, which is a forbidden magic domain in Tyrwin. Whenever a player casts a chaos spell, they inflict themselves with chaos sickness, a stacking damage dealing status effect that can easily kill you if you're not being careful. Druids are all about nature. They control the earth, air, and alteration domains. While most of their spells are damage dealing, they will eventually have a handful of more powerful healing spells, and alteration gives them the ability to buff their allies with an assortment of stat boosting spells. I'd also love to give druids the ability to shapeshift somehow in the future, but that's definitely feature creep and I'll likely never get around to that. As I was working at the classes, I couldn't help but start dreaming up some of the passives that they could have in their skill trees. I finally caved and started designing a couple of the skills. And then I decided maybe it wasn't so crazy to release this update with a skill tree as well. I spent a few weeks putting together the base tree system, then started designing icons for the mage skills. The most complicated part about the skill tree is that I have to dig through code and add exceptions for the classes where it makes sense. This typically means just duct taping a skill tree modifier function into a bunch of our combat code, but sometimes they affect other aspects of the mechanics. After the mage tree was mostly finished, I moved on to the hunter tree. Unfortunately, this tree opened up a can of worms, because I knew I wanted one portion of the tree to modify how companions work. I want to boost their stats, allow hunters to control them while using a bow or spear, and give them some additional passive health regen to make them far more viable for hunters than other players. But our companions are a bit finicky. It just seems like there's always an issue with them in every single patch, and so of course I spent way too long cleaning up their code and tweaking them to try to get them to work a little better. 
I figured I'd knock out the mystic tree next. So far I was making pretty good time. It took me about a week or so per tree, which meant about six weeks to finish all the trees up to level 30, which wasn't too bad. But the mystic tree stopped me in my tracks. I ran into an issue with Unreal Engine's gameplay ability system, which we partially use for combat. But because we're only really using it partially, I had no way to tie into it when it comes to healing. I wanted to grant additional bonuses to allies when they're healed, but since all the healing is handled in what are called gameplay effects buried in C++, which directly affect health stat changes, things weren't as simple as they seemed. I spent several days trying to find a workaround and finally threw in the towel. I decided to redesign the skills around our existing system. Not the best way to design a game, but I'm pretty used to this method thanks to my early days in game dev when I couldn't code myself out of a paper bag. I decided that the mystic would revolve around an aura that surrounds them. The skill tree unlocks the aura, and each skill after that modifies it to add more effects and to make it more powerful. At this point I realized that we were definitely going to miss our deadline for the update if I kept working on the skill trees, so we put them on hold to focus on the update, with the plan to release a few skills at a time and smaller updates afterward. So what's next? Well, we're really eager to get back to working on dungeons, but we're kind of at a standstill with the design. We're not sure what makes a good dungeon in an RPG, so we wanted to ask you. Let us know in the comments what sorts of things you enjoy about dungeons and games. We really enjoy the Holy Trinity and plan on designing our dungeons around having a tank healer and DPS, but we also know that most of our players play solo and we want to accommodate for that. So what are your ideas? Right now we're still kind of up in the air, but I think I'm ready to take a step back from the more coding heavy development and focus on some level design, quests, and maybe some new monsters. Right now I'd like to release the first pass of a new zone that introduces new resources, some NPCs, and new monsters so players can start exploring again. The plan will be to then make a second pass of the zone with quests, then another pass with secrets, and hopefully by then we'll be ready to release dungeons, and the next pass will include the full storyline and dungeon, complete with a new boss fight. Okay, I think I've finally covered everything that went into this update over the last four months or so, and what's coming up next. Also, uh, the game is on sale right now for the Steam Summer Sale, so please go check it out and consider picking it up for yourself or a friend. There's a ton of content in the game right now, and I'm confident that you're going to love it if you enjoy watching these videos. And if you do enjoy watching these videos, then please click that button to subscribe, and don't forget to leave a comment about what you want to see in our dungeons. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh yeah, and if you want to help support development of Swords and Magic, want early access to every single update, super secret bonus content, and exclusive merch, then check out our Patreon.